So one of the things that really gets me excited about the objectivist conceptual theory and the way it cashes out in an important and useful way is the emphasis subjectivism has on definition. And definitions not simply as a way of organizing your, your, your way you use words or checking the conventional use of a word the way a dictionary gives a definition, but definitions as an investigation into what the world is really like what and what you really mean mm -hmm. and what you intend to mean and that's something i think is a really vital skill for thinking conceptually something that students today are not really taught to do something that i think anyone working with a any kind of conceptual material um or any kind of moral material they're trying to decide what to do about something and there's a principle mm -hmm. involved um, it really is vital uh, to s step back and make sure um, we're clear on what the terms are mm -hmm. that are involved. Um, I think it's... Uh, yeah, we, we were talking about the, the uh, that famous <clears throat> example of the concept game. Oh, right, right, <laughs> which, uh, which Ludwig, Ludwig, Wittg, Ludwig Wittgenstein made famous. Right. Uh, Wittgenstein had um, written in, uh, I think, in Philosophical Investigations that uh, he got very puzzled about how uh, you could define the word game right. and concluded that you couldn't, uh, and that therefore that then authorized him. I, it was an example that made him think that uh, words couldn't have objective meaning, that it had to be deuces wild, or there had to be at most a kind of vague family resemblance between right, the, that was his the, famous the units. Phrase. Yeah, the family resemblance. That is, the, 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 there's nothing that all games have in common, he said. There's just the kind of family, some, some games have used balls and some use this or that, and there are patterns of similarity, but no one thing that you can say is true of all games. You know, yeah. when I was a kid, um, I used to take a tennis ball and throw it against the steps of my house and have it bounce back at me. Uh -huh. um, and that's an interesting example. So Wittgenstein would pick up on this and say, well, is it a game or is it not a game? Right. Uh, whereas I think an objectivist would say, well, um, we would ask, well, what do we mean when mm -hmm. we say something's a game? Um, and what we mean is, uh, when we think about what makes a game a game, it's a game as an artificial character. That a game right. is something that that uh, humans do, where what you're doing is constituted by some abstract rules that you have in mind, um, and you're acting in terms of goals defined by those rules. So you think like if you're playing checkers, uh, the rules of checkers yeah. define what moves are allowed and what you're trying to do, yeah, which right. is get your pieces to the other end of the board. And that makes checkers a game. Mm -hmm. uh, by contrast, uh, buying and selling stock is not a game because there's no rule saying whether you have to try and make money or not, <laughs> or whether you can be <laughs> foolish, or uh, you know what you actually the point of doing the stock uh, doing the stock trading is. is there's no yeah. rule about that, right. so it's not a game. Exactly. Yeah, and people. And as a result, though, people use a, a result of not having a clear definition, like the like the in terms that you were laying out, that people call all kinds of things a game, like investing. They, it's like they say it's gambling. It, the there's game no of difference life. between a casino and and Wall Street. Uh, I mean, most people on Wall Street are not engaged in recreation; it's work. So that's one big difference. <laughs> um, and you know, how many people do we know? who are get into a game like tennis and they get so competitive and forget that this is recreation right um, I, it's not it's not life or it's not work it's an end in itself so if you're not enjoying it <laughs> yeah. what are you doing it for yeah. uh, <clears throat> and there's things we do for enjoyment where um, there may not be a lot of rules involved and in my throwing the ball against the steps of my house and catching it it's right on the border there 
where yeah. you know it happens with concepts where there are some things <laughs> that are right on the border right. or they're close but aren't really part of the uh, uh, the part of the concept and you'd have to ask well was it a game well it was recreational um, but were there really rules um, were there really sharply defined goals not so much and so perhaps um, yeah. a recreational activity <clears throat> but not a game yeah, you know, it depends how much you may, well, you know, uh, you you were, you had a goal of catching the ball on the bounce, and you had a rule that you had to catch it after the bounce, right. <laughs> not before, not like that. So, um, you know, minimally, but yeah, but borderline cases are always a, an issue with with concepts in general and with definitions, and they've led to a lot of skepticism, <clears throat> and it. <clears throat> It's an example of how, I, of how people start with this kind of arbitrary conception of how concepts should work. And then they say, oh, they don't quite work that way all the time. Oh, there, it must not be valid. Well, how about, how about looking to see how they do function? Um, and that, I, I think that's one, one of the great things that Ayn Rand did in coming up with the theory of concepts, it was kind of stepping back from um, a ton of philosophical assumptions that other philosophers had made and and asking what what actually is going on when I think and I, I'm, I'm, I'm using the concepts that I that I know. <clears throat> right, and I think in that context, um, and getting back to the example of game, um, knowing your <clears throat> definitions will help you define what do the things you want to talk about really have in common. Mm. Um, and that'll help you be careful about your borderline cases because you'll want to ask particularly about them, do they have, do they share those common traits? So if I want to talk about games and what I want to talk about is the, um, <clears throat> the, the way we create the rules for the games, and the, the games are defined by rules that humans have made up. And my bouncing the ball example um, isn't a great one, is one I'd have to be cautious about referring to because it um, doesn't have a lot in the way of rules. Mm -hmm. But if we want to emphasize the recreational nature of games, that they're done for fun, then uh, bouncing the ball has uh, shares a lot in common with games in that respect. Right, yeah. Uh, there's another, another example that comes up in ethics a lot is uh, the concept of self-interest or one's interests. Um, and I, <clears throat> I don't know how many times I've been in a conversation uh, or argument with, you know, discussing philosophy uh, and, and with people where someone says, okay, um, you find two people um, both spot a five dollar bill on the pavement at the same time, okay? Um, so they should both go for it, and maybe even fight over it. And I'm thinking, can we really? step back? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can we just step back here for a minute and talk about the concept of interest? What is in your interest, and how, how you conceive of that, and if we do that, you know, then, then we can reflect seriously about uh, how you, what, what is the anchor and meaning of your personal specific interests, like having a $5 bill in terms of your life and your goals, and your values. Um, but you, you, that concept, without, that, without a good definition and the analysis that goes into it, you end up just making really silly kinds of arguments. And the $5 bill example is, um, it, it, it has the, the characteristic of asking you to imagine something that does happen, is you find low denominations of money sometimes. People drop them, they don't care, they go on. And it would seem absurd for anyone to fight over the $5 bill, and yet then they think, well, you must be because 
five more dollars would be in your interest, you must be willing to fight over it. When in fact, the very fact that a five dollar bill being there on the sidewalk is realistic invites you to think realistically about how you conceive of your interests mm. and how you conceive of whether you'd even pay any attention to it at all. Uh, what's really worth something to you? Your time, uh, your <laughs> happiness, uh, you know, avoiding fights for trivial things that don't, imp don't matter much. Right. Um, you know, uh, the broader part of participating in a whole society um, of uh, cooperation and uh, mutual support. And that's why they use so many, in so many cases, people find a wallet or something on the sidewalk and you just turn it in because somebody lost it. Because yeah. in the end, uh, you don't benefit that much from anything you take from it, and you do benefit a lot from having a society, participating in a society where that right. kind of thing yeah. happens. Yeah, that's a good example of, uh, uh, on this particular case of self-interest, particular concept. Uh, so yeah, I, I wish the skill of defining, I mean, and there is a logic to it. Um, there's a certain structure to definitions, a certain way of, of analyzing them. And uh, I would love to see that taught more often. And I, you know, in some people encounter that in courses in college, it should be taught in junior high. <laughs> You know, along oh, with. you know what? I've got a uh, we've got an ex <clears throat> an exercise on definition that uses Ayn Rand's concept theory, and if anyone yes. who saw the lecture was interested in trying to work through how Rand's concept theory applies, exactly, should yes. just uh, send us an email and we'd be uh, contact us and uh, we'd be happy to share that exercise. Sure, yeah, it'd be a good way to uh, sort of gear up and and really appreciate actually um, how. Uh, challenging it is to do a good definition and how valuable it is. Yeah. Great. I'm glad you remembered that. <laughs>